In Greek, the name Lydia means beautiful one or noble one. We here at Music Student 101 feel the same about the Lydian mode. Let's listen to it. Let's talk about it. Let's test ourselves on it. Here are your hosts, Jeremy Burns and Matthew Scott Phillips. All right, welcome back to Music Student 101. Welcome back. Hey, hey, Matt. Hey, Jeremy. It is great to be back down here in the studio again. It is. It, it really is. It's, it's been a minute. Uh, for those of you who missed us, um, last month was a pretty crazy month. So, um, yeah, we, we brief hiatus. Brief Apologies. Hiatus. But uh, here we are back. Here we are back. And uh, we have a discussion today. We, indeed we do. And then later on, we have a little bit of Jeremy torture. A little Jeremy torture, which is extraordinarily popular. I know, apparently. <laughs> and uh, this is all revolving around the Lydian mode. The Lydian mode. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I can't wait to get into this. So we're going to definitely get deep into it after our little social section. But I, I yep. want to say that uh, I was up until about 1 o'clock uh, this morning. <laughs> Doing the bumper music for this episode. Oh, nice! In the hopes that I would kind of be having the Lydian <laughs> in your ear, kind of yeah. on the brain and in the ear. <laughs> so we'll see if that worked or helped. You know, hopefully so. Yeah. But anyways, um, we have a new review. We do have a new review, and so this is uh, five stars from Astiato. Uh huh. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, from Spain, who says, Now I am obsessed with music. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at, we, we all are at this point. Um, and uh, Astiaro says, Dear Matt and Jeremy, thank you for sharing your knowledge. I listen to you every time I take my dog out for a walk. Uh, I am a magician and mentalist. Ooh. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, for me, discovering music theory has been a real magical experience. And the best thing is that even discovering the secret tricks behind music, it doesn't lose its magic and its ability to amaze. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank thank you, uh, Astiato, for for your kind words. And uh, I agree. I agree. The the more I learn about the music, the more fascinated I am. Yeah. You know, there, there's not a whole lot of well, I know how this works now, so it's not as much fun. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. It yeah. doesn't take it doesn't take the magic out of it learning the tricks. If know? anything, it, first of all, you never learn all the tricks. So, sure. so if anything, it just makes it seem more incredible. I'm know? no David Copperfield. No, when it, comes <laughs> me, to, when it comes to music, no, me neither. Not the one the book was written about, but the one who tried to make the building disappear. Or yeah, the and did he make the Statue of Liberty disappear once? Something that was like, like one of his that. big '80s magic. '80s magic tricks. They, yeah, they showed that on television, and yeah. Um, but I, I still maintain that music is the closest thing we have to magic. I believe it. And, uh, seeing that, that kind of supports my, my theory. I believe it. Yeah. For a ma magician to say that. <laughs> exactly. Which yeah. by the way, Astiaro, what a great name for a magician. For, uh, yeah. Astiaro. Astiaro. From Spain. Yeah. Nice. Uh, thanks again, Astiaro. Thank you. For the review. At, at the beginning of every episode, we have what we call our social section where we read, we start off, we do a new review. Yeah. We do that because, uh, it, it boosts our presence on the feeds. It uh, does. Where our shows are available. Yeah. And it also uh, engenders great, uh, conversation about, for example, the magic of music. Oh, and, that it does. That it does. And the musical of magic, which, which I think is important. You know, we're not just, we're not just patting ourselves on the back. I mean, we are a little bit, but... <laughs> We're letting other people pat ourselves on the back. We're, just, we're letting we're other people pat saying. us on the back. <laughs> and uh, purring while we do it. Uh, but we also uh, we also re we also thank a new Patreon patron. We do. And then we also do a listener mail. Um, we do. Because they often bring up interesting topics. Because they, yeah, because they often bring up good music theory questions that might would go unanswered otherwise. Or bring things to my awareness about the show that I might not have been aware of, <laughs> which we'll get into in a second. <laughs> but first, Interesting. Let's, let, yeah, let's talk about our Patreon patron. Let's do that. Um, we have uh, John Huffmaker from Ventura, California. Very nice. John is a fellow bass player, or shall uh, I say, a bass convert. Did, 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 oh, a convert. Oh, hey, there you go. You read this Now e we're converting. You know who we're talking about, Matt. You read this email. <laughs> yeah. He used to take guitar lessons, you know, but mm -hmm. he, he, he moved on to bass. And uh, he's also a Primus fan, no less. Of course. 
And uh, he is he's a, the proud owner of a new Carl Thompson bass. Oh, wow. So John is ready to get rocking. Yeah, I, yeah, with that bass. Yes, he is. John is of our generation. Indeed. And uh, John gave us the quadruple whammy. <laughs> and that is awesome five-star review. He gave Excellent. us a review. He's now joined us. He gave us a PayPal donation. Wow. A, a very generous PayPal donation. Which you can do too, incidentally, everyone. Uh, we don't advertise PayPal enough, but it, it is definitely there. That's on the donate page of our website, musicstudent101.com. Yep. Number three, he gave us a super nice email. And now number four, he's on Patreon. That's Excellent. what I call a quadruple whammy. The quadruple whammy. Oh, yeah. Five-star review, PayPal donation, John super nice good email, people. and now he's on Patreon. <laughs> that, yeah. Excellent. Thank so, you so much, John, yeah. for all your support. So John, later in life, he was actually diagnosed with a severe form of ADHD that mm. he believes was an obstruction to his music. Right, yeah. He says, uh, one of the reasons I excelled in my career was my adaptability to learn things so absurdly fast that most people have to see it to believe it. <laughs> Looking back, I think the reason I kept putting my instruments down is because I could just never progress. Mm. I'd hit a wall and playing the same beat month after month got boring. A couple of years ago, I went on Adderall, something I never had before. I suddenly had rhythm. <laughs> rhythm. <Yeah. laughs> um, I never Maybe thought Maybe I need that. to be on Adderall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, you're a bass player. Well, he's a bass player, so... Hey. <laughs> I have I'm ad- just kidding. John continues, I have absolutely no doubt that the Adderall has removed that brick wall that I could never break down. And now looking back, I realize what a disservice my previous instructor was. By not really explaining things to me, it's pretty obvious that trying to memorize hundreds of notes sequences is not helpful in any way. And also within the body of that email, he was talking about our episode on modes. Right. And how his previous guitar instructor just had him learning all the patterns and all those modes. Just memorize all the modes. Memorize all the modes Mm. and the notes involved, you know what I mean? Alas. And then Uh. he said he heard our episode and everything just kind of made sense all of a sudden. (laughs) So um, yeah, you know, um, on that subject. Yeah. So since we just got through talking about how part of why we do the social section is to bring up interesting topics. Yes, uh, sir. Um, there are different ways to. I mean, I teach guitar myself, right? Uh-huh. And and you know, th- there are different ways to approach instructing someone in an instrument, and different people learn in different me- methods. Mm-hmm. Um, some people really do prefer to just memorize um not necessarily the note sequences like memorize the notes to you know C Dorian and then F Dorian and the, but but to at least memorize like sort of the scale degree relations mm. right for example Dorian being natural minor with a raised 6 or Lydian which we'll talk about today being a major with a sharp 4 and you know, so some people at least do like to memorize that other people do definitely prefer to understand the system of construction, uh-huh. you know, so that you know, raising the six or lowering the two for Phrygian or whatever doesn't doesn't seem like just arbitrary um, operations, but you know, you know, you can sort of understand how these things grew organically out of uh, the Ionian mode, which we now call the major scale. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, so it, it it can definitely be. It, it can definitely be challenging for an instructor to to find the way that worked. I I, you know, I really hate for John that his instructor definitely gave him the wrong one for 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 the way you know uh, his his learning worked and and you know, kind of kind of stuck with that. You, you see that a lot. But yeah. it was unknown to John and his instructor at the time of these lessons that sure. he had ADHD. So and that might be one of those things where. Um, considerations an instructor needs to take. Mm, and absolutely. Um, absolutely. It's a personal question to ask somebody. Not everyone goes around just... A, yeah, and, and probably not something you would want to just assume just because you were having trouble memorizing the modes. I mean, right, yeah. I, I, think, I think most any person would have trouble memorizing the modes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. If you told, if you asked me what uh, D Lokian was right now, I would have to sit down and actually, you know. <laughs> yeah. It, well, well, it would be the same out. as E flat major. So that's like, but you know, that, that doesn't help me at all. 
<laughs> I just got my five string bass. I'm just getting to E flat. Yeah, <laughs> 46 uh, years old. But you know, I mean, that's that's not me memorizing Delocrian, right? That's me knowing the system. And so if I know the system, I can spin out, spin out whatever. You know, and that's the way my brain works. Yes, yeah. I could start on the D note and play the pattern. Exactly, exactly. But start on the D note and p- play the pattern, and there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but yeah, I, I'm glad. I'm glad that. Uh, this is this is uh, uh, sinking in a little better for John now, yeah. Um, you know, and you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully, we can be helpful with that as well. So yeah. So John, uh, thanks again for all of your support. Thank you so much, and and also uh, for bringing up this topic. For bringing up this topic, which is which is an important one. You yeah. know, I have seen people try to learn, you know, I mean, forget the modes. I've seen people try to learn the major scale by literally memorizing all the notes to all 30 major scales. Mm -hmm. You know, um, which is, which can feel a little insane. Yeah. Um, At some point, you're either going to start recognizing the pattern on your own, right? Or you're going to have that pattern explained to you and then it's going to be easier. (laughs) I feel like our, our bass instructor Cleve. Um, I feel like he's he's basically said, okay, gave me a couple of lessons, and by the by the end of those lessons, I had to just know it. Uh, you just had to know it. It's yeah. not like I had to go home one week and learn the five scales, major and minor. Yeah, no. He just expected me to know it and we spell just, it out as I did it. Spell it. That, that was his thing was play it. So so you're not just reliant on the fingering pattern, mm-hmm. you no, know, but that you're actually knowing the notes you were hitting. Yeah, we had to spell it up and spell it back down. And if you think that's easy, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, that I was mean, just for major and minor. Yeah, and this is for major and minor. And, and some of the arpeggio exercises and things I was having to spell out too. And mm-hmm. I mean, like, like wow. Yeah. <laughs> but we digress. But we digress. Uh, so if you want to be like John and support us, uh, either PayPal or Patreon, you can go to our donate page on our website, musicstudent101.com. Yes. If you just want to go straight to Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash musicstudent101. Excellent. And then, uh, yeah, for like a dollar donation a month, you can do like monthly donations on Patreon. Right, PayPal, right, you yeah. just do one donation. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you do a dollar a month, you get to the extra bonus episodes on there. Mm-hmm. Of which there are a few, and they're very interesting. A couple of cool little videos we did. Mm-hmm. And then for $3 a month, uh, you can get a coffee mug. Indeed. Three to four dollars a month, you get a coffee mug with Music Student 101. I say coffee mug, but it has, it'll either be that or like a, a plastic. Uh, you see that or a thermos. The, the thermos kind of, is, re- they're both really cool. Yeah, so. the kind of vacuum thermos thing. Yeah. And then uh, for five dollars a month, you can actually write in and request a special episode. Absolutely. Which we haven't done in a long time, like I say. Yeah, we, we, need, to, we need to get back into that. We, and um, we, In which we will answer in no less than 15 minutes your music theory questions specifically. But you got to write in and request them. But you got to write in and request them. I try and be good about welcoming the Patreon patrons at least within a month or two of their arrival. Right, you know, yeah. But, um, and then I say, hey, send me an email about the uh, question. But, you know, some people are just happy to be there, and yeah. that's cool, too. Either way, that's Patreon, mm. and that's John Huthmaker. Yeah, and that is the 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 immortal John Huthmaker. The, the legend. The legend. The myth, <laughs> the legend. Okay, so we uh, we have a listener mail. We do. And this is Yitzi Lebovics. Yitzi Lebovics. Yeah. Uh, From Jerusalem, Israel. Jerusalem. Very nice. Yeah. What does uh, Yitzi have to say? Hey, guys. Love the show. Been listening for about a year now. I just got up to 106 altered chords. Very nice progress. Episode 106. Episode 106. Yeah. Altered chords. And on the website, there isn't an option to download from 106 on. Hmm. 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 Well, that sounds inaccurate. Hmm. And, and that, you know, we should fix it. Mm-hmm. Uh, not what we intended. Uh, is there any platform that I could download from? I don't have internet access on my commutes. Long story. So I actually download each episode. Well... Hmm. Uh, number one, we are definitely going to get on that, that website and see if we can fix that, mm-hmm. right? Um, so there you go. Uh, I believe I believe you can download on Spotify, can't you? That's a good question. Maybe you can. Actually, yeah, like things like Spotify and I know Apple Music. Uh, Apple Podcasts, you can download, yeah. You can download and make it, what do you say, make available offline. Yeah, that, yeah that's what they call it. They say make available offline. They mean download it to your phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, let me just try and 
give this little deal with a without spending too much time on it. Okay. Um, so initially, when I started doing this website, I was using this software called Adobe Muse, oh, uh-huh, which yeah. went defunct in t- 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 twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> and so since then, I've been trying to kind of like figure out what to do. And then last year, I started kind of moving everything the website from Adobe Muse to Adobe Dreamweaver. Yeah. But I still have nowhere near the progress. So where I'm still using Muse. Yeah. Now. What you do is once you release an episode, you embed the code, and then you can copy and paste it to your website. Well, now that's not even doing it. I can't copy and paste to this to my web design software. Ugh. So now I can't even share the shows until I get that fixed. Ugh. And then my solution was to put in that little space um, a link to my Dropbox where I yeah. have all the episodes available. You can uh-huh. just go to that link and download. Uh-huh. Hopefully I'll have that up and running, but right now it's not looking good. In fact... <laughs> There's a possibility that this episode will not have a web page to it. Mm. Possibly not the one after it. Ugh. Because I'm only on episode 20 out of 123. <laughs> and I'm writing code and I suck at it. <laughs> but all that to say, we are attending to the website. We're trying to figure out. We're trying to move on to the new design and the new software. And yeah. get back on track. Ugh. But uh, uh, that, yeah. I wouldn't have known that until unless they called that to my attention. Yeah. Wow. So that's what's going on with the website. Many mm. of you might not have noticed until you might start noticing now. You might start noticing now, yeah. Hopefully in the next week I can get this worked out, as, at least to have the links to the Dropbox on the website. But Right, right, yeah. If that doesn't go down, just email me at info at musicstudent101.com. All I got to do is copy the link and send and, it and, back yeah, to and, you. And email you the, the Dropbox link. Mm-hmm. All the episodes will be there in the same quality that they are, if not better. Excellent. <laughs> once they get on the platforms. Excellent. Okay, so... So, with that out of the way. Yeah, Yitzi, thanks again for bringing that to our attention. Indeed, thank you very much. And we'll get on it. We, we will. Or Jeremy will, apparently. <laughs> All I do is show up and run my mouth. We've, we've established <laughs> we've this. We've established that. <laughs> All right, let's get on with this episode, shall we? Shall we, indeed. So, we are talking about the Lydian mode. Yeah, we talked about this on episode 27, Modes. Right. I think we just called it. When we talked about modes in general. I think we called it the diatonic modes was the name of the episode. That sounds accurate. And uh, the one John was referring to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. So certainly a precursor to this episode. Indeed, yes. If if you haven't heard it yet. Yeah. Way early episode. Indeed, indeed. Uh, And and I would definitely suggest going back and listening to that episode for a sort of in-depth look at the the modes, the diatonic modes, of which Lydian is one. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, in general, uh, the the short version of that is so um, we create diatonic modes by taking a major scale and um, shifting it so that what we think of is the tonic. Mm-hmm. Although we do, uh, some people will start calling it a final instead of tonic when we're talking about modes. But we we shift that that note of origin up a certain number of notes along that scale. Mm-hmm. So where this is the major scale, also called Ionian mode, this would be Dorian. And and I'm just I'm just starting, I'm just going up, taking my starting place up one more note of that scale every time. Right? Which if we're, so we re- we're referencing, we're kind of referencing the Ionian mode for all of these. Yes, that's what makes them modes. the diatonic mode, is that the derivations of the major scale. So when you moved up from C major, are we doing C major? We're in C major. So if you moved up from C and then you start on D, this mm-hmm. is now the Dorian mode. Still playing all the white keys, so all the notes that were in C major. Uh-huh. And, but the, from D to D is now Dorian mode. And we also call that mode two because mode it's two, based yes. on scale degree two of the Ionian scale Eggs, or the major indeed. scale. Indeed. Okay, carry on. Yeah. And if I co- uh, continue to mode three, scale degree three of that major scale, this is Phrygian. Yeah. Go back down. That's when you really notice it. That That's when you really notice the Phrygian, yeah. To the the flat two, yeah. All of these scales, because you're... Because you're not shifting the the half step whole step pattern, but you are shifting what you consider the 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 final of the scale. The these half step whole step patterns get get offset, and then they create um, interesting things that that make uh, these modes very notable. For example, like you mentioned in Phrygian, the the half step between the first and second note, mm-hmm. right? Uh, between E and F and E Phrygian, mm-hmm. which is uh, mode three, mode three, and um, relative to C major, right? <laughs> 
And backing up a little bit, we said we just said the Ionian is kind of the happy major scale, you know? Yeah, it's nice and happy. We talked about Dorian being the mullet mode <laughs> because it's business in the front and party in the back. Yeah. It's like the first half is minor and the second half is major. Yeah. And then the Phrygian's just kind of kind of weird Middle Eastern kind of sounding. Uh, yeah, Middle Eastern music, Spanish music, and death metal. Yeah, and death uh, metal. Don't yeah. ask me why, but there you go. And then we move on. And then we move on. The one we're going to talk about a lot today, Lydian Mode 4. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Mixolydian Mode 5. Which is major with a flat 7. Major with a flat 7, mm-hmm. exactly. And then a, a Aeolian, which is... Uh, which is the same as the natural minor scale. Mode six. Mode six. Which is just A minor, which I, which we know as the relative minor to C major, right? Mm. The, the Aeolian mode. Mm-hmm. And then finally, the the much uh, maligned Locrian mode seven. We have learned that people malign what they fear. <laughs> and the locri mode is to be feared. I there's, think I fear there's it. no perfect fifth. <laughs> That's a diminished fifth, right? Yes. So I think That's a, it's a, yeah, this is spooky. I think the locri mode is the ultimate argument for using the word final instead of tonic because it's you don't you're not really tonic. It's really hard to establish a tonic with no perfect fifth. Or even a, a seven. Or a leading tone either a for that matter. Tone seven. Yeah. So there's Locrian. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> we're here to talk about Lydian. We're here to talk Locrian, about Locrian's we'll, prettier cousin. <laughs> we'll call Locrian the Bjork mode because she's the, the only one in uh, pop <laughs> pop culture that I know that has done anything. <laughs> the that. Bjork mode. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Lover. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. Anyways. Anyways. We're here to talk about the fourth mode today. Mode four, Lydian. So, um, and then, like I said, we, we some of these discussions we've already heard in chapter 27. Some of these will be, right. will be new information. Absolutely. Um, this is considered more of a major mode, right? Yes. And I think that's probably because it still has a major third in it. That would be what I thought, yeah. And if you actually, it still has actually the the root, the third, and the fifth. Mm, it does to be a major triad. It does if we build that. Um, can you, let's talk about one thing. I wish I'd talked about more on uh, on all of these modes episodes was the chords that you can construct. Yeah. Um, and I had to sit down and kind of figure that out when I was doing this piece. You know. Yeah, it, it's an interesting topic that is not really often brought up in in the. Uh, in the case of modes, very much, um, mo- because modes are c- considered such a melodic thing and such a con- contrapuntal thing, mm-hmm. you know, and um, uh, you know, especially you know, in jazz, they w- they will talk a lot about playing a, a Dorian, mo- a D Dorian over a D minor mm-hmm. seven chord progression or something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, in, in which case, it's talking about what you're doing soloing versus you know, so it, it it's. Yeah, it's it, unusual to to talk about them in terms of creating diatonic chords the way we talk about the major minor scales that way. And I don't know why, because uh, it's it's definitely an interesting uh, sort sort of topic to to get into. That's yeah, I, I agree, and it helped me knowing with this knowledge helped me actually compose the piece for this. Um, you know, the bumper yeah. track for this. I yeah. haven't written a lot of stuff in Lydian yeah. before. <laughs> yeah. As much as just, I like it. The, the, there's just not this, you know, mountainous body of work in, um, you know, assigning function to the various chords of, of the various modes the way there is in, in the major and minor scales, mm. you know. Okay. So, um, really briefly, mm-hmm. the Lydian mode, which is the fourth mode of the major scale, as we said, uh-huh. right? Um it turns out it resembles the major scale in a lot of ways, uh, in every way except really one. And when that one is that it contains a sharp four mm. uh, relative to its final. That's really the only difference between Lydian mode and the major scale, is it's it? It's the not? only difference, right? Because, I mean, like if I stayed in C major to keep things nice and simple, uh, mode four would start on F, right? Uh-huh. So this would be F Lydian. So you can imagine if I play 
Um, if I'm playing all white keys because I'm taking the notes from C major, you know, that means I have to play B natural, right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to the B flat that would it be in F Ionian, F major. Uh-huh. Yeah. Instead of doing that, I am... Uh-huh. Right, yeah. So it has that sharp four in it. Which creates a sense of nebulousness. Mm-hmm. Because to your ears, it is really easy to think of that sharp four as a leading tone in itself. Up to the five, right? Yes, and, and typically when we're in a major, the only leading tone is that leading tone seven, isn't it? Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only the only leading tone, at least in, in diatonic music in the major or minor keys, yeah. Yeah, yeah, unless you do a... Uh, yeah, yeah, unless you get out of diatonic and into chromatic, like with five or five. Like a five, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Okay. So so that's what that is. Um, and, you know, because, because it, it has two potential finals, really, it, it has this sort of... Uh, a wistful kind of not exactly pointed in a specific direction kind of feel. Right, because it has a, a leading tone seven and a leading tone four. Right. And the leading tone four is a leading to, tone to the five. To the five. Which is, in this harmonic series, next to the octave, one of the most um, prominent frequencies. I, I would say the, the most important frequency uh, next to the octave. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, and the and and you know and again you know because there's not been this great body of work talking about tonal function where the modes are concerned, you know we don't necessarily have to conform to this idea that the sharp four has to lead to five. I think in a lot of music based on Lydian mode, uh, that kind of idea of a leading tone is is a little bit ignored, mm. uh, just because we we're, we're, we consider ourselves in a mode and we don't have to worry about that stuff. You know? Ah, interesting. Yeah. That might have been useful when I was writing this uh, bumper of music. <laughs> well, you know, if you subscribe to my theory, which 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 all of you should. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But really, I mean, if you subscribe to my theory, you know, I mean, one of my little pet theories has always has always been that you could sit down and sort of map out basic chord function to all seven of the modes, and that that would give you a lot of material for writing new music uh, if you were to do that. Mm-hmm. So if I was to sit down and write in Lydian mode, me personally. Yeah, you know, I might be much less inclined to to uh, ignore that than you know, uh, I would be inclined not at all to ignore that tendency to, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, and you know, I'm sort of respecting that that B wants to go to C, parallel fifths, but forgive me. Mm-hmm. So I was listening to episode twenty-seven uh, yesterday just uh-huh. to kind of get my little recap. Uh-huh. Or my recap, or whatever you want to call it, uh-huh. and uh, you said something uh, you, when we we're talking about the the leading tone of the four right. and the seven. Right. This, this mode having two leading tones. Yep. You mentioned this to result in a lack of focus. A be- lack of focus. Yeah. Be- because of two competing leading tones. Yeah. You want to show us what you're talking about? Um. Sure. There's just kind of a, a you know because to your ears, this could easily be the leading tone, right? Um, mm-hmm. and also, right? Can you and get that, us an F? That's an F. Yeah, okay. So. so the first two notes I played were B to C. Four to five. Four to five. And then the second two notes I played were E to F, seven to one. Sharp four and sharp seven, that is. Or sharp uh, four and major seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah. That you landed at the final, but it didn't feel very final. Didn't feel very final, did it? And I struggled with that during this composition. Yeah. Um, I even did a droning. I did the in G mix uh, G Lydian. G Lydian. Yeah. Which, and I even started off with a drone G note. And you know, in G Lydian, the two chord is actually major. Yeah. And it, it could act as a five of five, but even when I went to D after the A major, it didn't feel. Yeah. I felt like it was in the key of D. And then when I landed on G, I was landing on four. That's what it felt like. <laughs> Could be a common problem. Usually those kind of things are, to me, are a counterpoint problem. Um, That's entirely possible. Yeah. Uh, but 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 in, in general, that, that could also be sort of the characteristic of this mode. Mm-hmm. Is, it is, is It is a little unfocused. Yeah. You know, if I'm just kind of...
So the, that top melody is sharp four to five. Right? Uh huh. Uh huh. And then one and three. That's supposed to be our tonic chord, our final, right? Yeah, but it sounds like one. Doesn't sound especially final, right? Uh huh. That does. Yeah, which is the five, isn't it? It's it is technically the the minor three. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going crazy, but. <laughs> I guess we could. That would sort of reestablish it as the final, right? That was five one. Oh, that was. Yeah. C major to F major. Okay. Which which tracks, right? I can do that. Yes. Play. And then play a C. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't sound like the final. Yeah. It's hard not to sound like you're going from one to four when you're actually going five to one. It is. In this it mode. is. Hard my spontaneous composition, but mm. Mm. Lydian mode. Hmm. Yeah. And you landed on one just I landed on one, yeah. Now, I'm in trouble today, y'all. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> um oh hey. Before we get into a little bit of history, let's talk about the actual chords to this mode. Sure. Let's just take it one by one and compare it to the major sca major diatonic chords, right? Absolutely. So let's just go have a one chord here. Let's, let's establish so, ourselves um, in F. We're going to be in, we're going to stay in F Lydian, I guess, to keep things simple for right now. For all of y'all playing along. And so the one is a major chord. We've established that. Also in the major scale. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um... The two chord happens to also be major. Look at this. Mm-hmm. That's where you really feel that Lydian-ness. Yeah, and you know, if we were if we were talking about harmonic function, any major two chord we would be inclined to instead call five of five, uh -huh. right? Yep. Yeah. So so there's almost a, a five of five. Well, there is a five of five, a hard baked into Lydian mode, right? Because of that sharp four scale degree, mm -hmm. which makes scale, de which makes the two chord a major chord, because what you've done is raise the third of the two chord mm -hmm. in, in raising four, and makes uh, uh, five of five to sort of hard baked in. Compared to in major or the Ionian mode, where two would be a, a, a minor. minor chord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, three, as as we've kind of established already, is a minor chord. So that is again uh, fairly similar to the major scale. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of similarities to the major scale here. Mm -hmm. And then we have, <laughs> then we have our uh, four chord, or which is based on that raise four, and that raise four makes this a diminished chord. So this is a four chord, y'all. <laughs> so I guess yeah, I said five of five baked in. What I really should have said was seven of five. I guess is, they're both kind is, of. I guess what? The, yeah, I guess they're both kind of baked into the. Yeah. Uh, making five feel a little more tonicized when you get to it. Yeah. In my opinion. You, so you're already hearing the tonicization, aren't you? Yeah, totally. Um, and I'll even do you some good voice leading, leading to help. Or, see, you just landed on a five. That's five. Yeah. Which is also a major chord. See, I feel like the uh, the tonic just flew out the window. <laughs> the final flew out the window. Yeah. And, and you're going to feel even more like that when you get to uh, the sixth chord, which is minor. Well, now I feel like I'm back in major again because it's the same. You're feeling like you're going to go two, five, one, and end in C. Yeah. yeah. But alas. Uh, and then and then the seven chord, which is also minor. Yeah. This is where, again, I had so trouble. So this is a minor leading tone chord so it's not a it's not flat seven it is minor seven minor leading tone chord which doesn't Crazy. really behave like a leading tone yeah it's, it's a little it's a little messed up and then finally we're back to F. one yeah one yeah yeah that minor it is it, it, it makes it makes one kind of vague you know if i if i did if i did if i had done diminished mm-hmm Yep. Yeah, that one would be very clearly established. Absolutely. That that minor chord makes it a lot more vague. It's like you have to use borrowed chords if you really want to. And yeah. then what's the point of writing in a mode if you're borrowing chords? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. 
I mean, I can do that to sort of reinforce. I still have a five here, so I can always, I can always, until I get you back in F, right? <laughs> I you could, but that's not very practical when you're just listening to something, is it? Not really. Well, so there's a little taste of the feel of the Lydian mode, right? In, indeed, yeah. Um, a lot of reasons in my mind that this is hard to ton. It's, it's hard to land at the final and feel like the song is done. You know, what absolutely, I mean? absolutely. And one of those being that the seven normally a leading tone diminishes is actually a minor chord going to a one, which doesn't really have that effect. Right. The the four normally is subdominant to the five, mm -hmm. but instead we have the sharp four, so it's actually acting like a secondary seven to the five. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then when you get there, you feel like the five has been tonicized. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to the one after that, you feel I feel like I'm on a four chord. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's that, that's your ears being being more refined than they used to be. So 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 good job. I feel like it's my ears doing what they want to do. It's, it's your ears doing what they want to do. Yeah, what your ears want to do is hear the major scale because you've you know. As we've talked about bef before, yeah. you've been hearing the major scale all your life. Yep, and uh, singing it and all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we're 100%. We're, we're and yeah. uh, you're taking me back, man. You're taking me back. <laughs> Since before you could talk, you've been hearing the major, the Ionian mode. So you want to hear Ionian mode, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but... Alas. Y'all, this is the Lydian scale with the uh, flat four. <laughs> or the, the rate, the, what do you call it? We call, it, we call it a scale flat four Lydian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I should have said natural four. Na <laughs> you, you mean natural four? Yep, yep, yep. Such a music theory snob over here. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> well, yes. let's talk a little bit about the history as we've promised history. As we have promised some history. Some historical context. Yeah, yeah. So, so dig this. In Greek, Lydia mm -hmm. uh, means beautiful one or noble one. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, so like the name. I never thought Lydia. Yeah. My, okay. I've never put those two things together in my brain. Yeah. Pretty That's, cool, huh? Yeah. Nice. Which beautiful one? I mean, it's it's a it makes sense. It's a very pretty mode. It's a pretty oh, mode. oh, absolutely. Yeah. Noble. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, this goes far as far back to at least the twelfth or thirteenth century. Ah, uh, at least. Which was a surprise to me. For some reason, I always acquainted it with the French composers of the, um, in, you know, the... Um, the Ars Nova movement, the, the, um, the troubadours and the trouvères, so the, the, the popular music of the Middle Ages. Oh, even further on to like Debussy. Oh, oh, the sorry, I went in the, the wrong direction. Music, you yeah, were, yeah you, 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 well, and, and for very good reason you should do that. Debussy, who, by the way, uh, 20th century composer, yes. early to so far removed from the Renaissance, uh, but uh, uh, frequently used multiple different modes in his compositions, Lydian included. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, Lydian was definitely present in many Debussy compositions, and and so as, there's a good reason why it may make you feel sort of like in a in a Debussy vibe. Yeah, and uh, Eric Satie, of course, uh, that's him too. One of those. Yeah, all those French impressionists. Well, let's go back several hundred years. <laughs> this is um. A piece called uh, Saint Mag the Saint Magnus Hymn. Okay. Or Nobilis Humilis. Nobilis Humilis. Yeah, yeah. And this it, it's date dates back to like I said, either the twelfth or thirteenth century. Yeah. It's kind of unknown. The composer is unknown. What what does that mean? No noble. Noble man. Noble humilis. Or noble humility. Humility. Maybe. 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 Noble and. Noble Somebody and, that speaks Latin, write in and help us out here. Noble and humble. Well, actually, that would track because apparently this this was kind of a requiem, but it was like, it was an Lydian mode. So, oh, okay. It's not sad. It's actually a celebration of this person's life. Right. Is yeah. What I understand. But um, let's see here. If you just want to give a quick listen, sure. Well, I shall play. The melody is three five four. So let's get in. Uh, let's You're get procrastinating, get in. having to do ear training, but okay. Let's find. I, I'll, I'll always. <laughs> um, three five four. Let's do hit hit a G and then an A chord like a G and then A minor, uh, A major. So a major? it'd be G Lydian. So like, G. yeah. So the 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 thing goes like this: one, two, three, four. And that's the main kind of starting melody. Nice. So we got a, a one to a two chord. Yeah. 
Three, five. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Four. four. Sharp four, though. Uh huh. <laughs> nice. Exactly. Pretty. So this is 12th, 13th century, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then in the early 1600s, we there was a Flemish composer, uh, Guillermos Messal. 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 Who had a knack for composing Christmas songs or pieces. That's where I've heard that name before. He did like a, a hundred billion. Yeah. <laughs> and among those was the Nato, Nato Nobis Sal- Salvator. Yeah. Birth, maybe birth of our, sa- ki- our savior king. Uh, Nato? N- Noble's Knight of the Savior or something like I that. I thought knight, but Nato could be birth. Nato? Neonatal? Uh, Nato, <laughs> Nocto is 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 night. I could have looked it up. Na- yeah. So the night of our noble savior, or maybe the birth of something our noble like that. Savior. Yeah. Again, anybody that speaks Latin, help us out here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was in Lydian, of course. Yeah. Um, and then even uh, Beethoven later on, 18th century. Right? Yeah. His uh, string quartet number 15, third movement, features the Lydian mode, which is uh, one of the late Beethoven string quartets where he was waxing experimental. Mm, okay. Because he was completely deaf by that point anyway, so what did he care? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at that, but um, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, totally deaf by, by, by that point in his life. 100% like, completely couldn't hear a thing. He's like, this seems like it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> this seems like it should be beautiful. And anyway, I don't have to hear it. <laughs> oh, I listened to it. Actually, it's so beautiful. It, it is. Really it is. is amazing. His late string quartets are considered uh, to be ahead of their time. And and for very good reason, and, and you know they're they're true works of genius. Well, it wasn't very virtuosic. This one, it was just real chill and real beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Check that out, y'all. Uh, Beethoven, Definitely. String quartet number fifteen. The Beethoven, 30. any of the Beethoven late string quartets from about eleven on, I consider the quote unquote late ones. So there's the classical music genre, and then just a couple of pop examples as I continue to put off this Jeremy torture. You might be familiar with Jane Says from Jane's Addiction. It's got this it's in G. It's going one, two. Yeah. But if we were a major, it would have been like one. All right. Which which has its own kind of niceness to it, but you know what they were going for is more of that major two feel. Exactly. And yeah. the same thing happens in uh dreams. Uh, hey, play a F F major and G major back and forth, and I'll put, I'll do the bass line. Okay, half notes. Uh, it's just like a bum, 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 bum. half notes. So there's the dream. syncopated half notes. Sorry. Yeah, and we're doing F to G. Mm-hmm. All right. So here's you know you got this uh, one two three four. One major, two major. Yep. Um. R.E.M. does that in Man on the Moon. They got a C and D thing going on. Yeah. Something about Andy Kaufman. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I can't remember this song, but it's something about that. We may be digressing into uh, actually the informal musical tradition of using a major two chord as a substitute for five. Yeah, except they go back to they go back to one. Well, so instead of one five one one two one, mm-hmm. which happens um, a lot. Yeah, which it happens an awful lot. It, like I said, I I, I kind of think of it as an informal tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be traced at least back to Darius Mayo and his Sodas do Brazil. So you know, it's all fancy. Uh, but we may be walking a little bit away from Lydian mode and more into this other notion of. of Major two is a substitution for, as a dominant functioning chord rather mm-hmm. than a predominant, is a substitute for five, uh, which I would love to talk about in a podcast someday. That's just a fascinating little thing that happens. Indeed. And then just a couple of quick cartoonic examples. I know yeah. there's this one. The Jetsons. Yep. And then the one that also kind of follows which we can uh, Which we can't talk about for copyright reasons. Oh, we're, I'm, I'm <laughs> loosening up on that. Yeah, we're loosening up on that. Okay. What's uh, the other one you got, Matt? Uh, was, what, what is the other one? Yellow which people. is straight up Lydian mode, right? That's that's pure pure Lydian, straight Lydian. Yes, yeah, so that that mm. 
what we heard was no 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 mm-hmm. so that was sharp four to five yeah so um just to break this down really quickly um a uh, scale degrees one three sharp four mm-hmm. six and five yeah. so lydian mode right yeah I'm in C Lydian when I'm playing this, so. And then, uh, scale degrees three, one, six, sharp four, five. Yeah. So, so in the lower octave, kind of mirroring that. We, we could we could analyze why this is such a great melody if we wanted to. That's great. Because <laughs> it, it is good. But sort of mirroring in the lower octave what happened in the higher. Anyway, yeah. we could go on about it, but then we'd be putting off the Jeremy torture. Yes, we, uh, yeah, which, which you seem fine with, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> I read that uh, the composer of such, the, the the very famous composer of said copyrighted melody uh, uh-huh. is, um, he wrote that in Lydian mode because he wanted it to sound just a little off kilter. Yeah. Normal esque, sure, but not entirely there. Because he, he, he felt like that sort of mimmer, mirrored the characters of that very famous show. Oh, I'd say he accomplished that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let me get my notepad. <laughs> get your notepad. Okay, here's my notepad. All right. Oh, by the way, Matt, did you know that today you were playing a Bosendorfer piano? Am I really? Yes. Wow, I feel I feel fancy. I went ahead and invested in the East West software to try and get my production shops up a little bit. Ooh, man, I, I wish I'd have known. I'd I'd have, I'd have not. I'd have, you would have enjoyed those. I'd have lose it. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Always looking to improve the quality of our product. <laughs> okay. So what's gonna happen? Uh, this is called melodic dictation. Yes. This is where Matt plays a melody. He does. And I, with my little pencil, pencil, uh, pencil, and paper, try and actually notate what he's what he's writing just by using my ears and nothing really much else. Right. Yep. Other yeah. than my theory brain, sometimes. Right. Other than the occasional theory brain. Uh, we recommend a certain way to do this, and I think it changes every episode we do. <laughs> <laughs> I go back and listen. But in general. We have maybe you're gonna give me four listens. I'm gonna give you four-ish listens, uh, and then uh, for each for each example. Yep. So on my first listen, mm. um, I typically focus on the rhythms of the mm-hmm. notes themselves, mm-hmm. right? You're gonna give me a little count off. You're gonna give me a time signature, and if I hear a half note, I write it down over the staff. Yep. Instead of on the staff. Right. So right. Right. Have so, so that we just have a sense of what the rhythms actually are. Exactly. And then so the second listen. After mm-hmm. I've kind of established or gotten as close as I could to what I think the rhythms are, I'm listening for the contour of the melody. Mm-hmm. And by that I mean, by that I mean, um, when it rises and when it falls, I actually graph it out on my paper in a very soft pencil, like it's a little <laughs> easily erasable. Easily erasable, like it's a little landscape. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do we call it? The nadir being the lowest point. Right. Yeah. The uh, climax. Climax being the highest point. Yeah. So keeping those in mind as I hear this melody. Yeah. And then third listen. Third listen. What am I doing? Maybe I'm just kind of trying to... By the third listen, hopefully you have some idea of what specific notes are, and you can uh, uh, sharpen the focus of that contour into actual uh, notes by comparing them to your final, by comparing them to each other, Mm -hmm. you know, and by listening for trial and error. And then by the fourth listen... Hopefully, what you're doing is just double checking. Yeah, you know, but uh, double checking slash uh, fixing any tiny remaining details. Yeah, doing your final notation. Mm-hmm. Then by then, I will present to Matt and find out how right <laughs> or wrong I was. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Ready? So, first melody, first listen. First melody, first lesson. We are going to be in C Lydian. C Lydian. So. And you know, be sure to get the sense of Lydian in your in your brain here. So, um, so. I 
I know C major. I know C major has uh, no sharps or flats. Ah, but C Lydian. But C Lydian will be f- sharpening the fourth, which is F. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and put down F sharp. F sharp. Yeah, it is derived from the G Ionian, right? Mm-hmm. Because C is scale degree four of G major. Hmm. Yeah. We talked about that in episode yeah. 27. We talked about how to calculate all that. Yep. Review episode 27 for such calculations. Yes, sir. All right. So, and um, your first note will be C. What, uh, what's the time signature? 4-4. Uh, four, four. Good deal. Okay, first note is going to be C. Mm-hmm. It's going to be middle C, in fact. Which, I ought to make you write it in alto clef, but I guess I'm torturing oh, you Oh, yeah, that's sick. <laughs> this middle C will be the C below the treble. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, you ready? I'm ready when you are. Am I ready? Are you ready? Go easy on me. All right, here we go. Uh, two measures for nothing. Okay. One... Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so first measure, beat one, I got a half note, a quarter note. Mm-hmm. Beat two, I got two eighth notes. Mm-hmm. Beat three, I got a whole note. I mean, sorry, half note that carries this to the rest of the measure. Mm-hmm. That pattern repeats in the second measure. Bun, da, da, da. Mm-hmm. And then the third measure, I think we got a little change up here where it's the same little quarter note at the beginning of it. Got him. And then uh, beats. Two and three are uh, eighth notes. Mm-hmm. So da 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 da. One, two, and three and four. And beat four, two eighth notes too, right? Four, yeah. Beat four is two eighth notes. So really, quarter note, six eighth notes, all in that one measure. Gosh. And then it lands uh, on a. On a whole note? Was that the yeah. end of it? Is that the end of it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so just recapping. Ha- measure one, quarter note, two eighth notes, half note. Measure two, quarter note, two eighth notes, half note. Measure three, quarter note, and then six, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, eighth eighth notes. notes. Two and three and four and. Yeah. And then landing on a whole note, ending right. the whole thing. Right. Okay. Second listen. Second listen. Ready? Yeah, listen for the contour. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It feels like we started and ended on the same note. Indeed we did. Okay, so I got that going for me. <laughs> uh, this is cool, man. Uh, okay, so so we got the first measure. Uh, well, I guess I should just talk about the contour, really. It's like... Dun, 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 dun. So, na, 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 na. It sounds like a five, one, five, four, five. Uh-huh. And then... One, five, four, so it goes even higher. Yep. And then so we got a small hill and then we got a big hill. And then measure three, uh, I can't exactly remember, but it sounded like it went bum, 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 like walking down from yep. a higher place, possibly uh, yeah, yeah. final, possibly walking down from the final, and then landing on the final on measure four. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I, now i got to just figure out what, what these notes are. I'm gonna, let's go ahead and have the third listen. Okay. Third listen. Here we go. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, gosh. 
Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'll go ahead and get these. I still have one more listen, so I'll go ahead and tell you what I think is going on in the okay, first two minutes. Okay, all measures. right. Okay, measure one. We got that C on the first beat, mm. quarter note. Second beat, uh, measure one, we have a, uh, what I think is one, five, five, four, one. Five, four, one? Uh, five, four, five, I'm sorry. One, five, four, five. So that's going to be a G, F sharp, and then back to G. Mm-hmm. So that this half note is a G. God, it's horrible looking. Uh, and then, okay, so the second measure, I got the one in C, uh, middle C, uh, quarter note, beat two. Again, we have a, a five, four, but I think we go up to one at that point. Oh no! Mm. That's not a one. One, five, four, no. It's Sing a, down it, the scale. It's a major, it's a minor third up from that five, isn't it? Um, that would not be in the scale. That was a, Sounds cool, but yeah. yeah. So then it's a major second up from that five. Yeah. Then. So that's a six. So always, you know, sing down the scale. You know, you, you heard that it went high. Uh-huh. And you weren't sure how high. Yeah. So sing down the scale. No, da, 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 da. I went down six notes. So, you know. Oh, gosh. Yeah, well, you know, that, that singing down thing kind of falls apart for the modes a little bit for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, you have to practice singing the modes. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so back to measure two. Then what mm -hmm. we have here is a... You have the quarter note C, mm -hmm. uh, and then beat two, we have a, a G, F sharp, and then up to um, an A. Yeah. And that's that whole uh, half note. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, so, okay, so then same thing at the first part of the third measure where you have a C, mm -hmm. quarter note, beat two, we got the full, uh, we got the, G mm. to F sharp to um back to A again. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then th these are all going to be the the four note walk down. A. Did I say I had one more listen left? Yes, you do. Okay. Let's let's give that one more listen. Okay. Let's give that one more listen. Here we go. All right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That makes sense. Okay. 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 Measure three. We'll just, we already talked about measure one and two, so measure three is my little trouble spot here. Yeah, there's always a little trouble spot. And uh, what's tricky is the scale runs down, but the the final is also the second beat or the third beat, second beat. Okay. Measure three. We got the C quarter note, first beat, second beat, same deal. We got the G F sharp, third beat, we got a um, A down to G down, and then fourth beat F sharp uh, and then the eighth note also uh, E and then fourth measure aha ha, ha, okay okay you didn't walk all directly down the scale did you yeah engage your theory brain but don't ignore your ears uh, yeah 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 don't just don't just assume you're walking entirely down the scale you know listen okay 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 Okay, play that melody one more time. I'm gonna try and do the uh, do the count. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Three, four. One, five, four, five. One, five, four, six. One, five, four, six, five, four, three, one. Skip that too. I do skip that too. Cheeky. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. 
That example will be on the website. Everything else is up to you guys in your ears. <laughs> there you go. Okay, next example. So, so let's be in D Lydian. D Lydian. Okay, so. Huh, this is interesting. Mm hmm. Um, D major has two sharps. Mm hmm. Now. We're sharpening the four. Right. Which is in the key of D, G sharp. Mm -hmm. So is it just coincidence that that's the next one in the sequence? Uh, well, that, that sequence is pretty sacrosanct for diatonic, anything diatonic, and the and these modes are diatonic. They already um, yeah. It is also true that D is the uh, fourth scale degree of A major. Ergo, D Lydian will have the key signature of A major. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. So back to three sharps. Back to three sharps. There we go. And then F, C, and G. Yeah. And is That's this... like episode three, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, episode, yeah. Episode five is when we started episode talking about Episode five, that, yeah. okay, yeah. It, it was pretty early. <laughs> Y'all just go back and double check me. <laughs> hey, man, we've only done like 123 episodes <laughs> at this point. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, okay, so when, what, what's the uh, time signature? Uh, let's be in 4-4 four, four again. Love it. All right. Okay, so... Okay, so three sharps. Three sharps. Four, four. Four, four. Okay. First note is the D above middle C. D above middle C, okay, got it. Okay, focusing on those note values, those rhythms. Here we go. Ready? Mm hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so what I think I'm hearing is first measure, one, two, three. Oh, is it uh, just quarter notes and then a whole note? Sounds like uh, two quarter notes and a half note. I keep on saying whole note, but you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I need to say half note. <laughs> two quarter notes and a half note, and that's measure one. And that's measure one. So, ba, ba, ba. Again, ba, ba. Measure two is the same. Ba. Yeah, so for the measure two, same deal. We got quarter note, quarter note, half note. Okay, now measure three, there was a little more busyness, but I'm trying to remember if it came on the uh, second beat. No, I think it came on the third beat. I think we got a... Very nice. Quarter note, quarter note, uh, eighth note, eighth note. Oh, maybe uh, two more eighth notes and then... Maybe. Landing. Huh? Maybe. Two more eighth <laughs> And notes. then landing on a whole note. Uh, okay, well, let's let's hear it one more time then. Okay, let's hear it one more time. Mm -hmm. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay. <laughs> okay. Rhythms. Oh, wait, that was my second listen. That was your second listen. Well, uh, okay. Uh, you, you, you still may be a little okay, because even if you're focusing on rhythms, the melody is perhaps sinking into your head a little bit. Yes, yes. Right? That's so. what I'm hoping. <laughs> okay, so another stab here at the rhythms. Mm -hmm. uh, so first measure... We already got that. We got it. And the second measure are both quarter note, quarter note, half note. Mm -hmm. Third measure, we got quarter note, quarter note, eight, 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 eight. Good. That finishes that measure out. Um, and then the last measure, the fourth measure, I got a quarter note, quarter note, half. Uh, yeah, half note. 
Quarter note, quarter and a half. Yeah, good. And I think I recognize that to be note wise a one seven one. Mm, very nice. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that down for measure four since I know it. I think I know it. C D C sharp, mind you. Mind me. Okay, okay. Third listen. I'm gonna Third I'm listen. kind of one step behind, but I think I'm still gonna make it happen. Mm. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know what I'm doing also? Like like next to my rhythms, I'm also writing the scale degree number. <laughs> Good job. And now I'm going to go back and figure out what the scale degree plot note in, was yeah. and just write it in. But let's see if it worked. Okay. Heck. One more. This is the fourth listen. Yeah. All right. Let's listen one more time. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. I got nothing to say I, except for the contour I, I, I noticed to go kind of up the first measure, yeah. up and then down the second measure. Uh, third measure, up and then down the scale, yeah. and then fourth measure, one seven one. I feel like yeah. I heard. Nice. Unless it was a five four five. <laughs> You're right. Let's Here see. we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right. All right. So here we go. You ready? Am yep. I ready? Are you ready? Measure one. Uh huh. Okay. Beat one, D quarter note. Beat two, G sharp quarter note. Beat three and four, A half note. Okay. Next measure. Beat one, quarter note, D. Beat two, quarter note, G again. G. Sharp, G sharp. And then you're moving down to what I think might be the, uh, the F sharp. Yeah, yeah, cool. So that's a half note on that F sharp. Same rhythm pattern mm-hmm, as the first mm-hmm. measure. Third measure, again to the D, quarter note, first beat, second beat, again that G sharp, quarter note. And then we have four eighth notes to fill out the measure with an A, down, 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 which would have been A, G sharp, F sharp, E. Correct. And then last measure, two quarter note, first beat, D, Quarter note, second beat, C sharp. Half note, beat three, D. Ah. Yeah, very good. <sighs> <laughs> Did I this get is it? that sigh of relief. That was perfect. Okay, great, great, great. That was perfect. Perfect, even. Ooh. Yeah. All right, do we have time? I came from behind, even, and, and, and did that, yeah. Man, you, you, you're not trying to, like, hold back or anything. <laughs> I told you on a text yesterday, you're going to go easy on me. Yeah. It's like you didn't even get that text. <laughs> I don't think you check my bed receipts. I, I, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm trying to go easy, but there's a certain amount of this that you, it's just, it's just Lydian, you know. This is, yeah. It, it's just Lydian, man. It's just Lydian, man. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm well into this whole thing. I, I should, I think my ears are kind of doing better than I expected, maybe. Yeah. It's a weird mode, too, you know? It is a weird mode, but that can also work to your advantage with just a little familiarity. It's weirdness yeah. can be, uh, you know, things things are, really strike your ears because they're weird. Well, it helps in harmonic progression because I know if we're doing augmented chords and I hear a weird chord, there's a good chance that's going to be my augmented or diminished chord. You exactly. Know I mean, if we're doing yeah. this. But exactly. Yeah. Melody is a little bit different. Listen for the one weird chord. This. <laughs> But so far, I haven't gotten the D, the uh, the sharp four, sharp seven confusion I thought I would have. Right, yeah. All right, man, let's uh, let's do another one, shall we? Uh, yeah, sure, let's see. And for time's sake, maybe this is the last one. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, one more. 
Good old Lydian mode. Good old Lydian mode. One more. This time, let us be in a Lydian. Okay. Um. So we got a F sharp, uh, mm -hmm. C sharp, mm -hmm. G sharp, mm -hmm. and then the next in the sequence would be Fat Charlie goes down D sharp. Mm -hmm. So you you just you just sort of add one in the sequence every time in, in the order of sharps every time. Have you noticed? That's a new revelation to me. <laughs> I thought it would get trickier when it came to the modes, but uh, <laughs> nah, man. That's... We should have tried one in a flat key to see what would happen. But... G sharp. You would actually end up taking away a flat every time in a flat key. Mm -hmm. uh, and not just not necessarily naturally. It just it just put don't put it there. Just don't put it there. Don't right? put it in the yeah, key yeah. signature. Okay. Okay. A Lydian, which is actually uh, four sharps. Which is actually four sharps, right? Uh -huh. Same as E major, because A is the fourth scale degree of E major. Uh huh. There's that calculation we're talking about. Yeah. The Lydian no, mode. Are, theory. The Lydian mode you're in basically will be the same key signature as the as the tonic that is a fourth down, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is why, which is why we keep adding a sharp because we essentially go backwards one on the circle of fifths to, mm. or forward one. Sharp, sorry, on the circle of fifths mm -hmm. because down a fourth is up a fifth, right? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, y'all listen to the Circle of Fist episode. Just go back, please. Go back and listen to that. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, A Lydian. Okay, right. here we go. Ready? Oh, what's my first note? Uh, your first oh, wait, note. Actually, is... just play it, and I'll see if I can guess it. I know I went down major, but I think I still I think that's still the tonic. That's still tonic. Okay, yeah. so the final, or the final a. which will be a second uh, space. Okay, uh, uh, actually, it's the, uh, well, we, we oh, can, it's the lower one. Yeah, I but you can, you can write it up there. We'll just yeah, I'll assume you're writing for contrabass. How about that? Yep. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four. Okay. I think I actually got this, maybe. Okay, uh, good. First listen. First, mm -hmm. okay, so first measure. All of it? Uh, just the rhythms. <laughs> God no, just the rhythms. Uh, first measure, we got a uh, quarter note, first beat, quarter, quarter note, second beat, uh, third, and third beat is going to be two eighth notes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those and two. then the fourth beat will be just a quarter, quarter note. note. Yeah, there you go. And then second measure, same deal. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Quarter note, quarter note. Third beat, two eighth notes. And then fourth beat. Fourth beat, uh, just a, another quarter note. Yeah. Okay. Third measure. We got a quarter note, quarter note, and then eighth note, eighth note, eighth note. That finishes up the measure. That other eighth note. So four eighth notes altogether. Mm, yeah. And then fourth measure, quarter note, quarter note, <sighs> half note. Half note, yeah. No, no, no. Hmm. That was the first listen. Okay. Listening for that contour. Second I got it though, didn't I? Oh, yeah. That's perfect. Okay, cool. Third uh, You're second doing much listen. better. Second listen for that contour. Okay. Ready? And that starting note is A. Okay. 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 Here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, one, maybe. 
Yep, good. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the contour I'm hearing. Na, 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 na. So, da- so starting here, then going up, and then down, down, up. Second time. Uh, na, na. Oh, it's, it's a weird, I think that's a sharp four. You sort of hear that tritone, can't you? Absolutely. <laughs> and then the same kind of ending. Na, na, na. Now the second one, I think, uh, na, na, up the hill, and then all the way rolling down the hill, all the way down to the root, uh, or the final two, or final. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think I got my contour. All right. Now, third listen, I'm going to try and chart this bad boy out. All right. So you're ahead of the game this time. I'm going to see if I can get this in three listens. Oh, let's, oh, let's see. I, I, I can't wait to see this. I'm rooting for you. Okay. All right. Ready? Uh-huh. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And because we we said we would do four listens, just because I got it, the third listen doesn't mean our listeners don't need a fourth listen, right? <laughs> so should I do a fourth one just for for uh, even for though the a lot of them, them it's better. all right? Even though a lot of them get this quicker than I do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, Jeremy got it in only three listens. Look out! But <laughs> all right, yeah, we'll do one more. Uh huh. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One. Two, three, four. Okay. I believe I'm ready. All right, let's hear it. First measure, measure one. Mm. First beat, A note, quarter note. Mm. Second beat, quarter note, E. Third beat, one seven one, which would be uh, a third beat would be uh, two eighth notes, which would be um, D. I'm sorry, A G sharp A, A G sharp, and then that A would be the fourth beat, a quarter note. Mm-hmm. Okay, so one five one seven one. Mm. Okay. Yep, good. And then the second second measure, exact same thing, only instead of a five, we got a sharp four in there. So would it be an A on the quarter note, first beat, second beat, sharp four, which is the D sharp, mm-hmm. uh, third beat, A, G sharp, two eighth notes, fourth beat, one quarter note, A. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. Measure three. Ooh, third measure, we have the, uh, again, we got the, a on the quarter note, first beat. Second beat, quarter note, E. Mm, beats three and four are going to be four eighth notes. And it's going to be a five, sharp four, three to two. And in the note wise, that would be um, E, D sharp, D sharp. Uh, C, sharp, C sharp, and then B. B. Yeah. And then. Down, that brings us down to the A and the fourth measure, quarter note, mm-hmm. second beat, that's a B or the two, mm-hmm. and then third beat, half note, A, which gotcha. is the final. Gotcha. Very nice. Ooh. Look at that. Got it in three listens, ladies and gentlemen. Three listens. <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. That's I, progress, too, but. I mean, you went easy on me. Uh, you not did. that much. Not that bad. A little. You know, normally Matt brings a book that has some of these <laughs> pre-written melodies in them, folk tunes and stuff like that. <laughs> but uh, uh, This time I didn't have my book, so I just was making them up. So I think you it, deserve a shout out for that. <laughs> but you benefited too because you also maybe can found some new compositions. I mean, some of these are actually really pretty, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, 
Um, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, excellent job with the Jeremy torture. Yeah, the more I do it, the less, it, less torturous, less torturous it, it is. <laughs> Except it just keeps getting more challenging. So I think I keep at a pretty even keel of torture. That's actually the idea is to stay moderately tortured as things get gradually more complex. You don't want to just get so easy that you can do it. Yeah. You don't want to be overwhelmed either. You don't want to be behind. But yeah. You want to be challenged. want to be challenged. So we hope you guys enjoy that episode. We hope you learn from it. Uh, and I guess normally we would recap, but what's the recap? You just heard the whole. What's the recap? Lydian. Mo well, here, here's your recap. Lydian mode has a sharp four in it. Yep, it's a major major scale with a sharp four in it. We should have just said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the problems you run into is the sharp four tonic sizes the five, just like the sharp seven tonic sizes the one. So it's a little hard to keep focus. It's a little yep. meandering. It's, it's not really. Yep. You don't feel like you rested. It's anywhere. a little dreamy. It's dreamy. Yeah. It's dreamy. It's a little dreamy. Whimsical. Whimsical, yeah, it's a little whimsical, like that. Lydian. Lydian. Beautiful one, noble one. Uh, yeah, and great little mode. See you next time, guys. Bye. Peace, love, and music. Feeling whimsical? That's the Lydian mode for you. Go play around with it. If you wish to support us, you could be like John Huthmaker and do any of the following. Visit the donate page on our website, musicstudent101.com, and make a one-time donation through PayPal. Or sign up on patreon.com slash musicstudent101 to donate monthly and get perks. You could write us a review on your favorite listening platform, or just write us and say hello at info.com musicstudent101.com